Hey, welcome to Viking Preparedness. I am Pastor Joe Fox. So, my wife, Sister Kate, and I just did something we don't do very often. Uh, we went on a date, and we went to the movies, and we went and saw Noah. <laughs> now, uh, you know, I've been listening to Glenn Beck on the radio, and he's been saying, don't go see this blasphemy. They don't even mention God. And uh, we had a guy that we went to a, a different assembly this week because we're out of town, and uh, he said he repented of ever telling his congregation to... Uh, go to the movie now that he's read stuff online about it and you know I've read stuff online about things before that I ended up liking and so I decided let's go see it and my wife wanted to go see it so we went and saw it and uh, forthwith is the review uh, there'll be some spoilers in it so if you really don't want to hear any spoilers you know you might want to tune out do I think you should go see the movie eh. You know, instead of spending all the money that you're going to spend on going to see this movie and buying, you know, high fructose corn syrup in a big old glass and eating popcorn with fake butter and way too much salt on it, you might spend that money better on getting yourself a copy of the Book of Enoch, you know, at least the first one, and the Book of Jasher. And you could certainly spend your time better reading those and being in the Word. Um, there's a lot of this movie that... Seems like the guy probably read Enoch, and he may have perused Jasher, you know, the guy who made it. Um, was it Mark Burnett or Ridley Scott? I don't know. You know, this is not an official review. One of those guys. Whoever likes Russell Crowe a lot, that guy. Um, he, he probably read Enoch, he probably perused Jasher, and he probably had some assistance from people who understood Talmud. <laughs> you know, I haven't read the Talmud um, and, or maybe Kabbalah, you know, maybe they understand Kabbalah, because there was some weird stuff in the movie. Um, example, like, you know, a Teflon that, that Jews will wrap around their arm, that leather strap that they'll wrap around their arm when they pray. Um, and he had one made out of the snake skin of the snake in the garden. Come on, really? Um, in the entire movie, I did not see one person of color. <laughs> Everybody was lily white. <laughs> um, really? Come on. Um, you read in Genesis chapter 7, verse 13, how many people were on the ark? Come on, pop quiz. How many people were on the ark? Eight, right? You got Noah, his wife, Shem, Ham, Japheth, and their three wives, right? So you have eight people on the ark. Well, in this movie, there's seven people on the ark, and the large majority of them are men. <laughs> You, I'll let you watch the movie if you want to watch that. So that's wrong. Uh, there's some actions that Noah takes and almost takes, you know, this dilemma that he's in uh, on the ark that's just pure bunk, pure garbage, never happened. What's that even doing in there? Who put that there? Um, there's a lot wrong with the movie. I think it would probably provide an excellent platform for discussion if people had uh, read Enoch and Jasher and, of course, you know, the Genesis account of it. Um, but really, if you're not pretty well versed in scripture, it might mess with your mind. It might stick things in your head that you would think, oh yeah, I heard that. Um, you know, like uh, the Watchers. He talks about the Watchers in there. He gets it wrong, uh, who they are. Yeah, he kind of gets who they are correct, but then how they act, wrong um, in that movie. Uh, the Nephilim, eh, it's uh, kind of, you know, he's got them being cannibals. You know, that's cool. You know, at least he understands that. But really... Not that good of a movie. Um, there was like somebody who just... It's, it's kind of like when I watch uh, combat movies, war movies. Most of them are just atrocious. You know, and I, I was in the military for over 20 years. It's just like, no, no, no. That would never happen, no. Um, it's kind of the same thing with this movie. You look at it and you're like, no, no, no. You got a little piece of this and, and you, you mixed it with a bunch of bunk. Um, so... Do you want to see it? I don't know. If you love Russell Crowe, you know, I guess it's okay. You know, there's good fight scenes, there's good CGI, there's good graphics of the flood. Um, but really, as far as being uplifting spiritually or, or enlightening, uh, you know, to further move you along in your study of the word, pass. You know, total pass. Um, I certainly wouldn't let teenagers or young people see it because I do think, it, as Glenn Beck said, it'll plant wrong images in their head. Man, it would be nice... It, it was cool seeing the people dress not in your stereotypical biblical robes and stuff. You know, Russell Crowe looked kind of like uh, uh, the road warrior, <laughs> you know, in it. Um, his wife, for a while there, I thought was going to be cool because she had like a head covering on. Um, but then she kept taking off and she was wearing like these really tight skinny jeans, <laughs> you know. So, come on, really. Um, 
I would like to see somebody make a movie who understood Torah, who understood, you know, Yeshua HaMashiach, and uh, just did a good, solid movie. You know, I, I, man, I would like to see that. Eh, maybe that's too much to hope for. Hey, I'll see you out there.